Hey, Jason, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jason? I cannot hear you. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, um, my, my Mac is giving me um, access denied to sharing my screen <laughs> or my oh. camera. So I'm trying to get it to not do that. Give me one second. Uh, general, I'm not a Mac person, so. Security, working screen recording, Zoom. Mm -mm. Anybody know how to do this on a Mac? <laughs> uh, yeah, usually it's like in the, um, under the settings, under sharing options. Uh, where is this thing? Hold on, I have it in here. Or it was it security? I think security and privacy. Sharing. Yes, security. Just yeah, security. So it's under like security and privacy. And then usually you can click on camera and give access or deny access to individual oh. applications. And so Zoom should be okay. um, on there. Okay, yeah. so I, I can try my camera. Uh, that might be. Yep. No. Yeah, no, oh, you showed up oh, for a second. There, yeah. Oh, there we go. And this is a better view. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the nose up angle. Um, <laughs> and then the other now is sharing the screen. Um, input monitoring. Yeah, so it should be in the same menu under um, screen recording, I think. Yeah, it's all grayed out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you have to click the lock the thing lock. in order to, like at the bottom left. Oh, 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 got it. Thank you. Yeah. Troubleshooting 101. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Windows totally got this. Mac. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it might ask you if you, you add Zoom on there just to leave the, like to restart Zoom. Okay. I'll be back. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, so let's try this again. Yay. Share. Yeah, okay. I think, can you see my, my screen? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Yep, yep. Okay, yep. I, have to, I have to get used to this, you know, seeing people on a different view in zoom um we use webex so i'm not quite well versed in zoom okay folks um let's get started um if you can add your name i'll put the meeting i had it uh where's the chat where's the chat chat this is the meeting notes link where you can add your name and i just figured it'd be fun um, if you are willing to share something about yourself, either something you're excited about, you know, something you're bummed about, um, kind of helps us get to know each other, especially since we're a smaller group um, and we'll be working together more closely. I figured, you know, it, it might be a, a good way to, to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, okay, so for the agenda, a couple items. One is, you know, how do we, um, as a, I guess, special interest group, uh, collaborate, right? Um, Slack, et cetera, um, going over existing efforts and then maybe new efforts. Um, so uh, does anybody have any other agenda items that we want to add? No? Okay. So let's go ahead and start get started with the collaboration model. Um, so thoughts on 
how we want to collaborate. Right now, this meeting is biweekly for an hour. Um, I don't foresee us needing more time um, or more frequent time. Um, but if uh, if others have thoughts on that, please uh, chime in. Um, this is Jason. So yeah, I think the uh, biweekly is working pretty well. We do spend a lot of time on the blog, uh, and I know that we're going to get to the mapping, but yeah, I think the biweekly looks great. Okay. This is my first time taking notes, um, so please, <laughs> if anybody can help me out here, you know, feel free if I'm not doing it right to just chime in here. I think people have edit rights. Um, but if not, I'll have to figure that out too. I'm not a Google Docs person either. Surprise, surprise. Um, okay, any other comments? What about Slack communications? There hasn't been a lot of communications on our Slack channel. Um, so not sure if that's something that people keep up with, if you would prefer a different medium for asynchronous discussion. Slack works great for me. I think Slack's good. I think it'll, yeah, we'll, we'll expect to get momentum and, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, it'll be all of us um, setting the example as well and kind of, you know, making it be active and then inviting others in because they see that it's active and so on. Okay. Uh, by at least two. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's I, I, too. Yeah, and I, I agree as well. Uh, I think it, it, it I think slide, like we have a mailing list and whatnot, but it's it's not the most um, active outside of just a couple of announcements, which I think you know the mailing list makes sense for announcements. Um, we had a couple of discussion threads, but it really never went anywhere compared to I think slack is is pretty reasonable because even if folks um, even if a thread isn't hasn't been talked about in a while, somebody could still respond to that thread, which is which is really convenient. And I'm butchering people's names live. <laughs> okay, so that uh, let's see. Uh, so the the discussion group. I think the concern with that uh, remind me. This is why I don't take notes while I'm hosting a meeting because I forget as people well as I'm typing. Um, you're saying because there's it's not really active. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, I mean it's the discussion the the like the mailing list is mostly being used for um like compared to let's say other groups, right? Like if, if I look at the IETF, the majority of their communication is happening in mailing list sorts of uh things, whereas in um in what we're doing, uh you know, mailing list seems to be mostly just uh, uh like announcements. That that's really all it's being used for. Announcements this time okay thank you for recapping that okay anybody else have other thoughts or ideas of other ways that we can collaborate no okay okay so oh scope and charter thank you uh i don't know who added that but feel free uh, that that was me um i and i i hope this Isaac, I, I hope it's uh, not not controversial or, or um, off bounds, but I thought, you know, since this is the inaugural meeting, just kind of getting um, all of us aligned on what we think this group is about. And uh, I, the, what I pasted in between the double quotes here is kind of one possible um, proposal here, which is that w there's a bunch of adjacent technologies and frameworks and methodologies around salsa and i think making the relationship between salsa and those adjacencies clear um and then establishing the appropriate cross links as well and so you know having the salsa specification or the salsa documentation refer to um you know those those other adjacent standards or frameworks and then in the the, the flip side of that is you know, I would. It would be great and useful, I think, if we if we started to see salsa quoted or referred to by NIST or by NTIA in their publications, in the same way that they you know they have a references section and a non-normative references section where they will point to um, you know other background or adjacencies. I think that you know we can think of um, you know part of the charter of this group being to to get salsa to the stage where 
we have those those inbound references as well as providing a comprehensive set of out, outbound um, you know, positioning references as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, and actually um, that brings up a good point. Um, and if people uh, feel free to chime in, I know there's a, a few of us on here, but if if uh, if you want to raise your hands or, or just jump in, by all means. Um, uh, Brandon, which I'm surprised he's not here, um, but Brandon had uh, mentioned that he was working with, I believe it was NIST, um, because we've been working on a couple of things in the background, um, and he was working with NIST to try to get the salsa being mapped to SSDS. Um, so that is a good example of this, except instead of NTIA, it's SSDS. So I think that that definitely aligns with what we've, we've been thinking in the background too. Yep. Yeah, um, and uh, I was just going to say, yeah, Bre Brendan's on an offsite this week, so that's why he's not. Okay. okay. Yeah. Here. Um, now, for the alignment of what this group is about, I thought maybe there was a proposal by Mark and Josh that had the definitions of the different SIGs. Um, so if, if someone's able to find that. Um, You're right. I, Let me. Yeah. Let me pull that up. I have it right here. I'll drop it in the chat. Oh, that's interesting. There's a, uh, there's a very different outcome statement there. So I think I'll paste in here as well. Yeah. Good, good fine. Thanks for posting that link. Um, Okay. Uh, so the, the theme there was government and industry widely accept SALSA as a lingua franca of supply chain security. Um, yeah, which uh, is a... Yeah, it's just a summary, but we can be more specific. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe those, those two, like, hey, we've got the relation, we've made clear the relationship between SALSA and the universe in which SALSA exists. Um, and Goal number two is um, salsa is the, the, the lingua franca of supply chain security. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So um, the, the other thing which I, I wanted to throw in as well, and I, I you know, as a <clears throat> despite my accent, I'm a, a U.S. person, but like I uh, there, I, ha I also have my own bias, and you know, tend to use the word government to mean U.S. government. Um, but I think we should recognize there are other governments, and one of the things that I'm interested in, and, and maybe we get into potential new efforts, is you know, thinking about non-U.S. Uh, emerging standards. And so, for, for every every time we we say the word SSDF, we should think about um, what's the EU's equivalent of SSDF, um, what's uh, APEX equivalent of SSDF and so on, and, and actually go out and seek out those things um, and find out what are the emerging um, regulatory frameworks and standards in non-US territories. Yeah, good point. Kind of, kind of re related to Isaac's discussion around that, um, for those that are familiar with the uh, Pod Security Alliance CCM, it's a controls matrix. It maps kind of like it, it goes to the different NIST, uh, but it also c covers like Canadian, Mexican, Chinese, oh, okay. Germany. Yeah, and it, it's it's a pretty good mapping. I'm not saying we mimic it, but it's a good reference of of a framework that goes across like that. Yeah, well, I know that. it's 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 admirable to think that we're going to get uh, salsa as the one standard, but I think. We've got a lot of work to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what I, I think it's useful for is like the compliance guys, like the risk management compliance guys, when they're trying to figure out, hey, how does salsa fit into this? A, a cross mapping could show them, hey, if you're basically using this over your organization's compliant, this is how salsa would meet some of those um, security controls or those processes. So it, it, it's pretty common to kind of cross-reference those for compliance groups. And the thing you have to work through is what is the extension me mechanism? Because this is not going to be a one and done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it almost never is. <laughs> and it's an evolving and we should uh, willingly suggest that people add additional 
evidence and as to whether it maps to salsa is a working discussion that we have to work through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we um, uh, had somewhat discussed that when we were working on uh, the, the blog and the mapping spreadsheet was what happens when, you know, there's an update or there's a new document, right? We would have to go back and, you know, do it. But at the same time, that's essentially what we're doing in our own companies, right? We're trying to map what the new requirements are. And so we would be doing that anyways in our day jobs. Um, and so we would just bring back that knowledge back to the community. Um, at least that was the idea from the, the members that were working on that spreadsheet. That's a dangerous thing to get into. Yeah. You know, if, if we decide that, hey, we need to move to, to a completely different hashing algorithm, that doesn't mean that the previous statements for the last five years are immediately thrown away. It's just a migration path, right? So mm -hmm. that's a very tender subject to get into. Mm. Now, I'm not sure I understand. Can you rephrase? Well, so that's a social standard, let's say we have V1 and everything is, gets uh, approved to say, hey, we're V1 salsa compliant. And all along we, we invent V2. I don't necessarily think we're gonna go back to all V1 claims no. and say, okay, now what does it relate? And you can't install the software because it doesn't make salsa V2, right? So you, it's a really tough conversation to have. Yeah, that one actually was brought up in the spec meeting on Monday. I don't know if, if folks know of that one. It's going to be happening every week. And mm -hmm. that was one thing, right? It's like, what happens to the people that are currently certified on version 0 0.1? And if we move to one or two, um, I suggested, well, maybe if there's a, you know, like VMware certifications, you're certified on BCP6, right? BCP5. So maybe that's the distinction that you can state that you're certified against a specific spec um, or specific version of the spec, um, but that was just a, a thought. Um, but I, I agree, it will become quite challenging as we, we have more updates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I, see, I see that as squarely in scope for the specification working group um, and it's an explicit part of the, the, the considerations that I'm looking at for how to get to 1.0 is um, you know, how to get to 1.0 without invalidating or creating confusion around 0 0.1, but then also how to get to 1.0 um, with a clear path to 1.1 and 2.0, um, which again doesn't create confusion or invalidation around um, 1.0. Um, so it's, it's definitely um, you know, front and center for the specification working group is that concern. Yeah. And I think a lot of this is going to be a linear process anyway, right? Because we first have to get organizations in general to, to have an understanding of what salsa is and why it's important. Um, because I talked to too many, what's that? Um, and, and they just don't understand it. So supply chain security in general is not yet part of, of most organizations vernacular. So we need to get it to that point first and, and have salsa become the de facto standard for supply chain security. And, and once that's done, or, or kind of as that's done to sort of tail end of that, now we can start talking about versioning and saying, okay, you are, you know, you are ready or, or uh, certified, et cetera, at this level. And then as new levels come out, then it's re really up to the, the organizations to decide, hey, we really need to, and it's mostly going to be defined by their customers. I, hey, I require this level is also for certification. Otherwise, you know, your software is no good to me. I, I would just caution you phrasing it that way, because Salsa is one of the data points in secure supply chain. You still got VEX, you still have mm -hmm. the S-bombs, and how they all relate sure. are part and parcel of the same problem space, and Salsa mm -hmm. is only one you know, an important piece out of it, but it's not the complete end-all story here. I think that's exactly right. I couldn't agree more. And I think actually that's absolutely central, um, if not the raison d'etre of this working group here, that yes, salsa is a piece of the puzzle. Um, and so, I mean, this group here, ideally, we would paint the picture of the entire puzzle and then assemble the pieces within it and show, oh, here's the salsa piece and here's the constellation of pieces surrounding it, including um, SBOM, including SKIP, mm -hmm. including um, all these other things. 
And here's how to reason about the space and understand Salsa's position within this broader context. Um, I think that's uh, absolutely right, Roy. You know, I, just to digress a little bit, I don't think end users are going to understand Salsa. They're going to look for somebody to make an endorsement that says, hey, looking at the Salsa data, I, you can safely use this piece of software. And, mm -hmm. and the question is, is there an up level or is there a representation to the stores, like the Play Store and so forth that says, hey, you know, Microsoft or Google or MCP, a blah, 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 says that this is a trustworthy piece of software. And that's what the users are going to see. Yeah. I see Jay's hand up. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add to um, what Roy said and then, uh, and then what Isaac was, was saying as well. Paint the entire picture, also making sure that we, that we uh, paint the picture of what Salsa isn't, right? So, mm. so not only do we address uh, you know, Salsa's use and, and um, in the audience that it's intended, that, that the use is intended for, but we also paint the picture of what Salsa isn't uh, what audience still needs a, a, a standard or a framework, and then what those gaps are, understanding that um, there may, we may be able to, you know, we're sitting there in this group together, you know, where we could be working on something that could uh, parallel with Salsa, that could service that other audience, right? So, so I, I, I want to expand that focus. That just builds trustworthiness throughout the community as well, right? We, we've not only said what this is, we give the entire puzzle, this is what it's used for, this is the eyes, but this is where our gaps are and what we could, what we can fill using X, Y, and Z, right? So I, I, I'd like to propose that as well, because as Roy just said, um, you know, th there are applications, but then who else is, you know, there are other frameworks out there, who else is missing? Right, so I, I, and I'm only saying that because I see uh, one of the lines written up here, the, the, one, uh, the one single framework, that's almost impossible today. Just because there's so many different areas uh, uh, of supply chain and, and, and service development and everything else. So, I, I mean, I, that, that's my only area of caution there. As an aspiration, as an aspiration, I think one is fantastic. As an aspiration. aspiration. So, yeah. so Jay, can, can you can you point out where it says one framework? Sorry, I'm trying to find a note on that. The lingo yeah, Frank, uh, the, the lingo will Frank. Be, will statement. be a lot of work to get Salsa to be oh, the one standard. That is right, right here, um, right under the CC yeah. envelope. This one right here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, I think that was Roy. Was that right? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, it could be. Um, <laughs> you, can get, you can give it to anybody, but I'll I can take it. The the one thing I, I wanted to bring up here is is there's a lot of other spinoffs that are are happening, and we kind of need to corral them and reduce them. Like the S bomb overlap with this, the Git bomb in overlap with this, and how many other ones by other governments can we for, can funnel them all to one spot to reduce it because. We can't scale to all these meetings and understand when you use one technology versus the other. And that's the thing that really worries me at the moment is there's plenty of things spinning up yep. that we potentially either have to be crisp or where they stop and where the next technology takes over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I Mike, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I think um, along those same lines, I think it's it's worthwhile to also, as we kind of communicate some of this out, make clear the distinction between like uh, salsa, the sort of attestation specification versus salsa, the set of requirements versus some of the other things. Because I know one of the, the big things that was also discussed yesterday in the specification call was it's often very unclear to folks who are coming in where that delineation is like, what is the builder responsible for, for versus what is me as somebody who's building a project responsible for, right? Because some of the salsa requirements are very much focused on 
the requirements of a project versus some of them are very focused on what should your build or CI pipeline be responsible for. And for a lot of folks, they just sort of out, you know, they, they use a, a, a tool um, or a SaaS or whatever to, to do that for them. And it could be, you know, confusing as to, hey, I'm just using a tool. Shouldn't that be providing salsa for me? And it's like, oh, that provides some level, but then you have potentially responsibilities on top of that when you're building your software. Um, yeah. I had, uh, I thought that's a super interesting thought. And one of the things I wondered if we'd have time for today is I have just a, f a few super high level slides, which I put together on software attestation um, and then how Salsa fits within that the attestation framework, how I see SSDF and skip fitting in that, so that same framework as well. And if it would be useful, I can just take 10 minutes to go through those slides and, and potentially it would be um, or, or could form um, some useful grounding for some, for, for some discussion in this space. So Isaac, do you have a, a overlap with Sarbanes-Oxley or some of the other financial? Um, no, but uh, this, that, would, that would be something which we could certainly look at within this framework. Um, so uh, Melbourne, obviously you're, 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 uh, <clears throat> you have the agenda here, but I, yeah. I'd be happy to take 10 minutes to go through this stuff and uh, if there's time today or uh, in a subsequent meeting. Um, so let's try to get through some of these quickly. Um, sure. at least as a talking point, as a quick talking point. Um, and then, you know, we can get to, um, is this, okay, somebody added this and then uh, I can I can come back to this one if that's okay. And I think I saw an additional hand up, was it Parth? Yes, uh, right. yeah, this is, my, this is my first time attending this meeting. So I apologize if this question has been answered or thought about, but this, I was just thinking- our first meeting ever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're uh, good. <laughs> So I was just thinking about it in the terms of like NIST 853. Like I know there's the SSDF, right? But what about the 853? Is there any plans of getting any kind of controls in place for supply chain and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, if, if the group, and Jay, do you have an additional question before I move on? Or is that an old hand up? And I guess an old hand up. It's, a, it's um, an old hand up. I'm loading okay. right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, if if the 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 team does not mind, um, this kind of bleeds into the existing effort. Um, so I don't know. Are are we comfortable with the discussion we've had so far with the scope and charter? I'm guessing we're going to need some sort of issue or PR drafted to actually create the scope and the charter. Um, but not sure if everybody's comfortable where we stand right now. Yay, nay? I think it's a yay. I see, I see shaking heads, okay. Um, okay, so for existing efforts and part that this will uh, help cover some of what you've um, asked is this is a spreadsheet and hopefully you all have access. And basically the idea is that we would map Salsa to SSDF to NIST 853, the executive order 800-161. Uh, I forget who volunteered to do the CNCF one um, and any additional frameworks that come out. Was that you, Mike? <laughs> Uh, I think it might have been John, but uh, him and I both work on the the CNCF side with with regards to this stuff. So I can take okay. I can take it. Yeah, and so the idea is is that we would call out what are the requirements from each of those specifications or frameworks that Salsa meets or can potentially meet the criteria for. Um, and so I think this helps with what you're uh, suggesting and the hope for the team that it's been several of us, it, it was Brandon, myself, um, uh, Emmy from Red Hat, um, Aaron from Verizon. Uh, I can't remember who else. There was a couple, like two more people in there. Um, and the idea would be that once we're done with the SSDF, that we would go propose to NIST, right? Hey, can you link Salsa? Um, and then we would continue on down this path. And as we finalize this spreadsheet, then we can propose this to OpenSSF as an OpenSSF document to say, hey, here is how we can help 
organizations, you know, comply with certain controls for these different frameworks and helps also can help. So that was the the overarching idea. And we post we posted a uh, or a PR for a blog post. And I think it's about ready. Um, and so if you are interested in reviewing it, we're really trying to push it out. It's been <laughs> committed eight, like, you know, a long time ago. Um, but this, this blog, um, and I'll, let me do the salsa blog. No, nope. mm. SSDF, here it is. Uh, no nope. foundation. I'll put this in the link too. This was the original. Um, so it's nice and pretty versus the GitHub. So it talks about the different frameworks and you know what Salsa can provide based off of the supply chain security um, standard um, and you know what we're trying to do as OpenSSF slash Salsa. And we invite the community to give feedback on that mapping. Um, so I'll put this in the in the chat, but that's kind of what we've been working on in the background. Um, it just kind of organically happened. One person was working on it and the next person was like, oh, I want to help. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that This looks good. And, I, and the CNCF actually also has a, a, uh, a group that was starting to do the same thing the other way. Like, how can we map the CNCF best practices to stuff like Salsa? So we should um, coordinate. Uh, but I think actually one of the things I wanted to sort of bring up as as a little bit of a concern and more of a and an, a question to the to the rest of the group of um, when sort of looking at a lot of the different sort of documents that are out there that are doing similar sorts of things like because you also have SCVS you have uh, actually I just found out this morning that the CD Foundation plans to do their own um, uh, and and uh, there's a bunch of other ones that have come out of uh, Finos and all sorts of uh, other groups. Um, uh, one is what can we do to sort of better coordinate um, among the various groups? And then the second thing is that some of the the various like uh, some of the frameworks, control groupings, et cetera, are, at conceptually different levels, like the CNCF's um, best practices are very much more like implementation best practices that you would say, oh, well, if I have a control, oh, if you want to go the cloud native route, here's an easy way to do that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they're at different levels and, I, and um, I'm not sure what we can do to sort of make some of those things clear because some of these things are going to be at different levels and we want to make sure we also don't conflate that either. Okay. Um, I would agree. There's a lot and <laughs> more, more than I was hoping for. I thought it was just a few. Um, so team, you know, how, oh, I see hands up. Sorry. Uh, I don't know who was first. Isaac was. All right. Go ahead, Isaac. Oh, um, so I, I was just going to say, I, I reviewed the, the blog post this morning. Um, I really like it. I think it's ready to go. Um, in my opinion, the one thing, um, which I think uh would be useful to think about for this blog post but then also just in the broader context of this group um is how we uh how we publish our work because i do think that there are elements of the blog post that i look at and go well actually that that shouldn't be a blog post that should be part of the core documentation and so i want to be careful as we go that we're not just kind of putting blog posts out that we're actually making sure that we're building up the core project and and, and salsa documentation base as well um and looking at you know, blog post or, or examining closely when we when something is the right thing to put in a blog post and a blog post alone versus when it should be part of the core documentation versus when there should be items in, in both places and so on. Because I, I do want to make sure that the documentation um, is comprehensive for the project and you shouldn't have to read the blog to understand the project, it seems to me. Correct. Uh, let's see. And so one of the things, and, and I can take a, a first crack at this and maybe just put them out in Slack on the mailing list, but maybe some, um, as well as having the scope and charter for this group defined, maybe we should, uh, you know, start to lay out some working principles as well. Like, so I think, you know, keeping an eye on non-US um, frameworks and regulations is, is one principle we should keep in mind. I think be keeping in mind um, what do we make part of the core documentation versus what do we blog is another one. I think, you know, general inclusiveness, showing our work, this kind of stuff, um, super useful. 
Somebody's very excited. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Sure it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Um, so I got layout working principles. And so are you imagining putting this um, as a, I thought I heard the, the distribution, either Slack channel or the mailing list, and, or maybe I misheard. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't mind drafting some and, and sharing them for feedback on the mailing list or in the Slack, but kind of incorporating them, I guess, into the, um, the, the collaboration motion of this, this, this working group that, hey, we have the meeting notes document, we have, uh, you know, our regular schedule, we have norms as to how we communicate. We have a couple of um, draft potential goals or, or charters about, you know, the scope of this working group. It would be great just in terms of general, as we build up the collaboration infrastructure um, and build structure around what we're doing here, having some, you know, documented working principles, like how, how we work or, or what we consider important or, you know, how we make decisions or what we prioritize um, and things like U.S. versus non-U.S., things like blog versus documentation, things like, uh, you know, showing our work as we go, this, this kind of stuff, um, may just form some useful working principles. And it's the kind of thing which, you know, just it would be great as we get started to, to, to get alignment on and, uh, you know, just get into the habit of doing. Yep, I agree. Anybody else? Too much. Roy, sorry, go ahead. You got your hand up. You've been very patient. <laughs> So Isaac, I have a basic question now. What happens if one of the governments puts in a, a request that doesn't transition across borders? Like if NSA asked for solves the level 15 to basically be we got access to the all the source code for the product, which is would not work for companies out of China and vice versa. Would is there a backdoor for how that is not part of Salsa and how they would deal with that? I mean, I, I think that there will always be things that aren't part of Salsa. Um, I think that there will always be, I mean, looking right now at SSDF versus Salsa, the two have very different scopes. Um, you know, SSDF yep. has a vulnerability management section, and Salsa has no concern with vulnerability management. And so I think that part of, part of this group is not to go, oh, there's gaps, let's close them, and more to go, oh, there's gaps, let's explain them and help people understand them and help people understand that SSDF and Salsa are uh, two disjoint things. One's prescriptive, one's descriptive. One has a scope of this, one has a scope of that. Uh, and, and I got that. Part of I'm the job asking, is not clear. Sorry, what were you asking? I, I'm asking is if there's a requirement that one of the governments make, is mm -hmm. there a, this is how you pivot out of salsa, right? This, is, this would be a nut. We would say, hey, this doesn't fit in the salsa framework if we wanted to make it standardized across all governments or do we allow one government to control that we have to, to kowtow to? Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm absolutely not suggesting that we standardize across all governments. I'm saying that when we position SSDF, it should be clear to everyone, how is SSDF diff different from Salsa? Great. What's yeah, I, under, I understand. The EU? How, what's that? And so it's less an effort of like kind of trying to standardize across governments and more trying to be descriptive about how Salsa does or does not apply to these various emerging frameworks. I, I think this is a conversation for the specification group, right? Because ultimately they would have to decide what should we do to the specification? Do we leave it alone? Do we update it? Or do we have like some sort of module for the specification specific for a particular country? Um, we could loop them into the conversation, but if this whole meeting is the positioning, then it's part and parcel of here. So it's a little weird. Yeah, I think it's a collaboration, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because as new standards arise, we have to alter the specification and then we also need to map um, back. If it's not here today, but then, you know, in a month, there is some new specification. Um, at least that's how I'm envisioning it in my head. Yes. I, think I, I would push back on the, the, the premise of that just a little, and, and maybe on, on this is part of Roy's question as well is, if there's a new specification or new new requirement comes out from the government, I don't think there's any requirement that Salsa respond to it or incorporate it or extend Salsa. I think, yeah, it would be a consideration. We would mm -hmm. look at it and say, do we think so? this is in scope for Salsa? Do we think it would be useful to incorporate? Should we generalize and upscope and look at Salsa? But I, I don't think that there's there's any notion that Salsa is a responsive effort and we're watching to see what government regulations come out and then making sure that salsa tracks them that's that's not how i've thought about salsa and, and maybe that's 
maybe that's something we should clear up here as well if we think differently about that um, because the idea that hey what happens if some government comes out with this new thing what do we do then I think we do what we always do you know we're going to look at the industry we're going to look at the community we're going to look at what government's doing and we're going to synthesize all of the various data points that we have in the ecosystem surrounding us and, and chart the right course for salsa um, I don't think it's the case that because the government X comes out with standard Y, we're necessarily going to be feel obligated to update salsa in response. Yes, but it does wound your position if we say, hey, SSDF mapping into to salsa, the government controls SSDF. If they start drifting away what we can represent, they'll go, go back to, hey, you have to give us SSDF claims, not, we don't necessarily care about salsa. Kind of weakens the story, which is why I brought it out here of what is our position when we hit these cases of is there a backdoor that you say salsa plus whatever x and that's what i don't see here got it i see so so you so part of so for example we could say ssds today has a section about vulnerability management salsa is silent on vulnerability management what's the answer right uh, right and I, and I think the answer could be you know, hey, uh, you know, in time, Salsa, you know, we intend to expand Salsa to cover vulnerability management. But I, I don't think, I don't think the intent of Salsa is to, uh, you know, be able to have a one-to-one -one mapping with SSDF. I think it's useful descriptively to explain Salsa to people who are familiar with SSDF. If I come in with a familiarity with SSDF and want to understand Salsa, there should be a document I can read to help that. And that's what this, this group here is, is charted with, with producing that. And I also think that there's there's still like the two ways you could potentially um, go about it, right? One is like the the depth sort of like question of like how um, deep does the salsa go? Because the more specific salsa might go, the more it kind of also falls under like you know if salsa starts talking about specific encryption algorithms as opposed to talking about high level, you know, you should be using encryption or something like that. Um, and then the other one is sort of the the general sort of like breadth question of like what sorts of things does salsa want to even say is within its scope versus you know some of those things and I think that kind of ties back into you know because I I think it is a huge concern um, from our perspective Roy and it's one that also I think like at some level we have to defer to just sort of the constituent members and say like hey what are you know what are the constituent members made of and it's made of a up of folks across the world. And so I think that kind of ties our hands at least a little bit with Salsa to say, okay, we would probably defer to saying, you know, well, the members are across the world, so we're not going to apply that specific uh, US government standard that precludes, you know, adoption to, to uh, other major members of, of our community. Jay? Yeah. And, and, and I guess to that end, and I didn't hear this if it was mentioned in the beginning. Should there be a um, maybe a, a monthly meeting between uh, salsa uh, specification and positioning, just in case? They, you know, one if if, the, if there's nothing to talk about, there's nothing to talk about. But let's say something like this occurs, right? And it requires a bit of polishing. One on the specification side, and then two how we position after uh, making uh, decisions regarding the specification. Um, perhaps having that meeting uh, might put us in a better position to kind of frame the, the language or, or, or how we want to address whatever changes occur um, to the specification as a result of any government influence. Do you think the biweekly salsa meetings would fit that Sync because we're supposed to supposed to bring so, so back status. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna say maybe not. The, these these specific meetings we're having specification, the tooling, and the positioning. These are very distinct meetings. What happens in that biweekly uh, salsa meeting is a bit more broader than what happens here. And I think that that any changes regarding the specification that might impact positioning or any changes positioning that might impact specification, I think those are still narrow enough where they might require their own conversation. Yeah. Um, just because of the broadness of that biweekly salsa meeting. 
Also, yeah, oh, yeah. Roy pointed out this earlier, and this is something that I don't want to gloss over. Um, this salsa effort is so huge that other organizations, large organizations as well, might feel a, a strategic push to create something similar that might be in the works right now. And there is, has to be room for us to have those conversations around what can be, what is it's just strictly competitive in nature or what may be able to be pulled in, consumed so that some of the questions that we have around the completeness of salsa might be answered by maybe pulling in some things that could potentially give um, salsa, if in, even in concert or partnership with another uh, standard, that kind of one-to-one -one mapping or, or even maybe not one-to-one, -one, maybe one-to-many or many-to-one -one mapping with the SSDF, right? Such that um, the, the specification and positioning conversation can have a little bit more meat on it around how do we, how can we respond using other resources we have um, in place. Now that that is that is a bit ambitious. That's a bit aspirational and far fetched. And I'm really thinking about the the, the togetherness around all of the all of, all of us organizations being included in this. Right. Um, that could be that could be talked about offline. But I just wanted to throw that nugget out there as well, just as a conversation piece. So. Uh, I agree. The, the salsa biweekly currently is too broad, um, but these these um, these three new SIGs they just started meeting this week, mm -hmm. and so I think the proposal going forward for the biweekly is that each of the SIGs specification, positioning, and tooling will have I don't know if it's five or ten minutes at the beginning of each salsa biweekly meeting to provide an update. And so I suspect it's too early because we just started, but I suspect what's going to happen is that's where we would raise the red flag. Um, I don't know if it, others, do you agree? Do you disagree? So I, I'll, I'll, and this is the last thing I said, that needs to be written down somewhere. It, I think it is. Um, okay. All right. That, that needs to be in somebody's charter or something some, that needs to be yeah. written down somewhere because if, yeah. if not, then other things are going to take uh, precedent that'll happen for like maybe the first couple and then it'll just get swept to the side eventually for other pressing issues. I mean, I, I you know, th that should be written down. Yeah. yeah, I thought I remember uh, reading it somewhere. I'll have to find it. Yeah, um, it's, it's scroll down the work stream process in, in that doc under collaboration. Keep going. And then each community meeting should include 50, 10, 50 minutes of work stream updates at the beginning. It's written down right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think it'll get better. Right. Um, but okay. this is the first week. So we haven't seen that. So I suspect next week is a salsa next, meeting bi weekly. So yeah, yeah, we'll probably enough. see something next week. Yeah. But, and, and, and all the all the SIGs are having meetings this week. One was yesterday. There's one, this one today, one on Friday. So next week, um, during that bi weekly, there should be 15 minutes for each. So about 40, well, about anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes of that meeting. Or is it 15 minutes for all three? No. 15 it's minutes each. Three was the intent. Wait, say that again? The intent was so 15 minutes for all three. Yeah, so that's cool. not, that, that, may, that may or may not be enough after a while. That, needs, yeah. that, that might need to get reviewed. Yeah. Yep. And I think, I mean, I think, Jay, I think your point is well taken. I think you're absolutely right. Um, and I think part of this is, you know, as we stand up these work streams, we're going to be need to adjust um, and so yeah starting with 10 to 15 if we discover that's not enough we can up it it could be that you know we may not need that whole section um on a bi-weekly basis but um since we're just getting going i think to your point um we should be we should be prepared to be agile and incorporate yes. feedback in that and adjust as we go okay you're right that's absolutely right uh, let me find let me write down you... uh okay go go, go ahead I said we got ten minutes left. Where you want to cover? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. So um, we have all of these things, um, mm -hmm. which is going back to the we need to keep an eye, like what what are what what was the language laying out working principles, right? 
So we're keeping an eye on it. So as a team, what do we think? Well, not, not this one, sorry. This one actually refers back to something that Jay and the team were saying. I actually do have an end-to-end -end view of supply chain security. And my goal was to map it to Salsa to show, hey, Salsa doesn't solve all your problems. Um, so I'm hoping that will help. Um, but in terms of these things, what does a team think we should do? Should we go off and, and maybe create maybe a document or an issue that explains what the objective of that document or new framework is? And if we should, or should not attempt to either write a blog or incorporate it into that spreadsheet. That's oh, well, uh, consider, considering I'm pro pro going and presenting the skip one for Thursday, I can talk to that one. Oh, nice. And it's, it, and it's more okay. along the lines of your supply chain framework positioning. And remember that what we're pr proposing in the working group is some basic technology to help with secure supply chain, not a, a here's how you solve the problem. And I think Mike, you, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I, just, I think, oh, sorry. Yeah, so just be aware that there's two separate things here is what is SCIT from Microsoft's point of view and what is SCIT in the IATF? Those are slightly different views. Yeah. Um, That's, could you expand on that, Roy? How, how, how should I think about that? So the, 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 what we're requesting the working group is some fundamental building blocks that we think all secure supply chains are going to need at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's standardized and says, hey, here's the interface that you have to support, you want that to be as small as possible so we can have uh, multiple implementations across the, the, the organization. Right? There's there's, hey, here's a common problem. Here's how we're, as an industry, going to solve it. There is still potential to, to say, okay, I implemented that, but I have, here's the rest of the building blocks that go into it that are over and above this. Ah, uh, so you're saying that there's, there's, a, there's potentially a, a, a suite of Microsoft products which would form, which would be mm -hmm. skip component at its core, which, which would be more comprehensively problem solving than skit in the abstract. I think of it slightly differently. There would be Microsoft implements the skit interface and potentially SigStory implements uh, the section of the skit interface that it's, it is overlaps with and so forth. And then Google and, and AWS may implement theirs or whatever. But what we're, you know, we're asking for four things in the IETF. One is a, the equivalent of a electronic equivalent of a human notary, right? I saw Isaac presented this and he signed it. Therefore, you can trust it because the your notary stamped it. There's a mm -hmm. counter signature on it. One, how do you audit that? Mm -hmm. And that has to be st standard. The third thing we're asking for is how do I find the identity of auditors that in a trustable way? And is mm -hmm. that DID or do we going to build something on X509 with documents? And the, the fourth thing is, is there a summary endorsement format that is smaller than Salsa and sits above Salsa to give the end user the yes, no? And yeah. so that I so that I can do composition, like three of my auditors say yes, and one says no, what does that mean? And it's yeah. not necessarily Salsa. To me, Salsa is pointing back at, here's proof that we have this data. Whereas an endorsement from the NSA or, some, or somebody else is saying, hey, you can trust us, but we're not gonna tell you what, how we came to that conclusion. And yeah. that's how I fundamentally think of these. Now, to argue is that, all the IETF is going to do, well, it's the working group and we give them a bounded set of problems. And if they decide cooperatively to increase their scope, that'll be over time. But right now we're asking only for those four things. Got it. Makes sense? Yes, that, no, that, that makes great sense. And I, I mean, I think, I mean, and this is, a, you know, I have, I have some, some slides around this and maybe in a subsequent session we can, we can go through them. But I, I, I think of, of Skit as, 
potentially you know complementary results. I mean, it seems to, that Skit is an attestation framework for making almost arbitrary attestations about a piece of software, and so those attestations could be, hey, I did a vulnerability scan of this uh, this container on this date, and I found it vulnerability free, and that's an attestation you may want to use Skit to store and have notarized. You may want to store an S form. You may want to store a salsa attestation. You may want exactly. to exactly or other and so it seems to me that that's almost i mean when we talk about salsa and skit um it seems actually that they're they have different functional uh different functional altitudes and capabilities that salsa is a set of things that you may want to say about a, a software artifact and skit is a way of um storing notarizing distributing discovering repudiating yeah. auditing an arbitrary, essentially an arbitrary set of attestations about software artifact. Yeah. So I'm going to say time out. <laughs> we went into the weeds a little bit. Um, yeah, Sorry it's that. okay. It's okay. It happens, especially with techies. Um, so the original, uh, I, I do it all the time. Um, the original question was, what do we do about all of these things? And I think my, my, Mike, you had your hand up. <laughs> and I think you were going to answer that question, hopefully. I can't You're hear muted. you. You're yeah. muted, Mike. Yep, yep. Thanks, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think to start off, uh, something like a GitHub issue with maybe an associated document um, is probably going to be good because I think the the conversation there w w was was really good, which is just like, actually, some things that are listed here might be complementary or might be completely different, or sometimes it might be just at different levels, right? Because some of the stuff that I know we mentioned in here, like even if it's a standard, some of those standards are even higher level than Salsa. And some of them are more specific, like the CNCF ones are actually, here's how you would implement a specific thing, whereas Salsa is trying to be more generic. And so I think it's worthwhile to kind of like figure out a way to describe that in a good way so that we know, oh, this is just a partner and this is that. And then I think once we do that, we can go back and say, what, what do we have to do about it? Okay, makes sense. Uh, Isaac? Yeah, I was, I was just going to echo that. And I, th I think that the, I mean, the, the reasonable place to start, I mean, I'm, I'm staring at this, um, there was a line item somewhere which, uh, you know, had an overall picture of, of the space. I mean, I think that the, the way to, is the end-to-end -end supply chain framework positioning. I think having agreeing some kind of overall framework independent of any of these four and three letter acronyms down here is the right how to anchor this. And so let's describe the problem space and let's say, hey, here's the, the universe of problems. And then within that problem space, we can start to position these pieces and say, well, Salsa has a mapping to this area of the problem space. You know, Skit has a mapping to a completely separate but equally valuable set of the problem space over here. His has six door fits in and, and so on. And so it's less about, you know, taking them point by point, how to Salsa compare to X and then to Y and then to Z. It's more about creating a picture of the overall problem domain um, and then mapping all these various things into that problem domain and showing how they sit, um, how they overlap, what gaps remain, and so on. It's the only place that that it ends up mattering is, do we have to format it and how do we sign it, right? And, and if we have to support multiple of those, that's gonna hurt. So yeah, there's a, your system is 100% accurate. We want flexibility. Some of these things all compose, but we may have to, to settle on some language at some point. Uh, okay, we have two minutes left. Any other plus one for the GitHub issues? And the best way to go forward with these will probably be an, a GitHub issue for each of these efforts so, to get SPDX. This. Melba, I'd love to see your supply chain uh, framework position because it probably- More than relates. happy. <laughs> Mike has a copy. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually did share it at Open Source Summit. Um, more than happy to paste it here. Um, yes, please. Yeah, uh, it was intended to share with the masses. So if we can alter it to make it better, I'm all for it. Okay, anybody Perfect. else for these frameworks? I guess we're gonna go with GitHub issues. Yes? Sure, I mean, it might even make sense. Uh, sorry, I, I have a 
get a delivery. Um, so I, it might make sense to maybe start off with them all somehow associated in one, just so that like we can set the um, set like some guidelines on how we're viewing these things, so that we know like, oh, this is uh, you know is this considered a standard? Is this considered a best practice and so on? And then we can kind of go back and um, think about how they all uh, interact with each other. Okay. Uh, so I, I can open up an issue with all of these in one. Um, I don't think it's, oh, I don't have the ability to do like any sort of epics or, oh, cause it's not Zen hub. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Zen hub cause you can do stories and then the dependencies um for the the epics which are stories um so i'll so, i'll go ahead so one of the things i've found in this whole space is unless we start pinning and settling on some building blocks assume this building block as long as everything is still fluid nobody gets all this stuff right if if we say hey we're going to assume salsa is the way you're going to attest things assume you're going to write your s bombs out blah 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 then we can build on it as a, a whole framework. But right now, every time, you know, I'm sure Isaac and, and I could paint two completely different pictures and people go, you just confused the hell out of me. Um, so we kind of need to get some common language because we could do a whole bunch of different things, but it's not going to help everybody try and picture what the hell we're building. Okay. I will try to write that up. Um, but we are over on time, so I, yes. I want to respect everybody's time. I will try to write that last sentence up. Um, and I guess we will meet in two weeks. Um, but we can obviously work asynchronously on the social positioning Slack channel. So thank you, everybody, for joining. I think it was a productive meeting. So yay. Super <laughs> productive. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Bye, thank everyone. You. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.